Hi and welcome to week two of Step Into Spring. Your challenge to get fitter, get moving and raise much needed funds for St Rocco's. I'm Beth, we met last week. I'm a fitness professional with 20 years of experience in the industry and I'm here to try and keep you motivated and keep you progressing towards your goals. And I'm gonna do that today with some advice on how to bring strength and conditioning into your exercise routine. So you'll remember in week one, we talked a little bit about goal setting and walking technique as well. So hopefully you've managed to progress towards your end goal over the last week. Hopefully you've managed to get the time and you've kept yourself accountable towards that goal. If you've struggled to fit your steps in, then scheduling is something that I'd like you to think about for the week to come. So if you've committed to doing 10,000 steps per day, but you're falling a little bit below that, pick just two or three days of the week where you're going to go above the 10,000 steps to make up the shortfall. That might be that you spend an extra 30 minutes running around with the hoover. It might be that you pop out for a walk. It might be that you kick a ball around in the garden with the kids whatever it might be that you need to schedule in to get you those few steps towards your end goal that's really important. And remember to keep the goal in mind. Think about how you're gonna feel when you achieve that and stay really, really positive. So today we're gonna to talk a little bit about strength and conditioning exercises and why those are gonna be so important to you when you're working towards your step into spring goal. So first of all, let's think about the muscles that we're gonna be using when we're walking. Starting at the lower leg, you've got the muscles of the calf, the big one, that's the gastrocnemius, and then your soleus, nice and low down towards the ankle. Up into the thigh, we've got quads at the front, hamstrings at the back, abductors and adductors. Moving up into the hips, we've got hip flexor on the front and glutes working on the back. And then, as we know from last week, all the muscles of your core need to work really, really hard as well. So I'm gonna give you a few exercises today to work on strengthening up those muscles in particular. So why do we need to do it? Why do we need to use strength training if your goal is to walk 10,000 steps a day, five miles a day? just to get more active. Why is that important? So if we can improve the strength of our muscles, we can walk faster and we can walk further. And by doing that, we're gonna get towards our goal more quickly. It's gonna make us more efficient. So if at the moment you can walk three miles in an hour, if you were able to accelerate your pace to four miles an hour, you'd get to that goal much, much faster. By strengthening up our muscles, we're gonna reduce pain and stiffness that you might feel after a long walk. And we also reduce the risk of you becoming injured because your body's stronger, it's able to withstand the stress that you're putting on there. By completing strength training, we increase your lactic threshold. And what that means for you is you're not gonna burn out as fast. So if you are walking and you're coming up to a hill and you find that your legs are starting to burn, if we can increase our leg strength and increase our lactic threshold, we'll be able to power up those hills much, much faster. Strength training in general increases your bone density, which is fantastic, especially for us women, but for everybody. It's gonna increase our muscle mass, help with our coordination, and it'll help increase your resting metabolism, which means burning more calories at rest, which is what we all wanna do. So, with no further ado, let me take you through a few short exercises that can get you towards these goals. So we're gonna start off with a bodyweight squat. This is a really fundamental movement that it's important that everybody learns to do well. And we'll see you through lots and lots of things in life if you can use good technique. So bring the feet out wider than the hips. And we want the toes either facing forwards or we can take those very slightly out to the sides. 
we want to ground the feet fully through all four corners. So the balls of the feet are down and the heels are down as well. As we squat, we bend the knees and drop from the hips at the same time. So we take a seat. We push the knees out over the toes to activate the glutes and then push through the feet to stand back up. So let's take a look at that side off. We start with some softness in the knees, so we're not gonna overlock that joint out. Keep the eyes dead ahead and the chin up. Core breaks nice and tight, so suck everything in through the center. We bend knees and drop hips back at the same time. Sitting down and then pushing through both feet evenly to rise up to the top. Now your range is gonna depend on your current flexibility and level of mobility so you may find that you're only coming to here today but as you progress we want to try and bring the hips a little bit lower and see if we can get those at least down till your thigh bones are parallel with the floor nice and slow make sure you keep the belly button sucked in all the time to support the back and we try to keep the back really really straight so the chest stays lifted and the body stays upright. And if you're new to this exercise, you might start with eight reps. And as you get stronger, progress up to 12. If you want to take this up to another level and start to recruit another muscle group, we can add on a heel lift. So from the bottom of your squat, you can press upwards and come all the way up to the toes. So we're gonna to start to work the calf muscles as well there. So squat down, and then as you push up, come all the way onto the tips of the toes, still maintaining all those other technique points and finishing at the top with heels under hips, shoulders over there and the head up nice and tall. So again, starting with eight reps if you can, building your way up to 12, and working through three sets of those. Next movement is gonna be the lunge. So again, working the whole of the leg. We're gonna start off with one foot forward and one foot back. Now we want a gap between the feet width ways. If your feet are too close together, you're gonna to get a little bit wobbly. So find a little bit of space width wise between the feet. From there, we want to take a fairly long step back so that the heel is off the floor. And as we drop down, we're gonna get a 90 degree angle at both of our knees. We want to finish with the front thigh and the back shin parallel with the ground. And then as we come up, we're gonna keep the front knee very slightly loaded so you see that the front knee isn't straight as you drop down, shoulders stay over the hips, front knee tracks out of the toes, and push up. Let's take a look at that from the front. So you've got your feet set at hip width. As you come down, you keep the knee pushed out. Get to that 90-90 position and push up. Really careful not to let the knee buckle in. So keep activated through the outside of the glutes to keep the knee tracking over the second and third toe. So again, we can start off with eight reps, building up to 12, and then take it over to the other side. If you'd like to progress this movement even more, you can take it into a walking lunge. So you'll step forwards, drop to your lunge, and then step onto the other leg. Okay, and you might use the length of your garden, the park, up and down your street, anything to get that movement going. Exercise number three is going to be a glute bridge. So focusing on the posterior chain. So hamstrings, glutes, and through into the back as well. For this, we're gonna to need to pop down to the floor. Okay, so let's take a look at your glute bridge. We're gonna set up with the feet, hip width apart, arms by the sides, and then push evenly through both feet to peel the hips up off the floor and then roll down through the spine. Pick the hips up and roll down through the spine. 
as you get to the top, we want to squeeze and recruit the muscles down the back of the body. And if you want to intensify the work, try and keep your lower back just a little way off the floor before you push up again. If you want to work a little bit harder in this, you can split the work into single legs. So to do that, just take one foot across the other, push the knee out, and then we've got all the weight in one leg. Now, as we're pushing up, we want to try to keep the hips really nice and level. So as you lift, try not to rotate towards the foot that's on the floor. Squeeze through the leg that's grounded. Press up to the top and you're going to feel that work right throughout the back of the body. Okay, so let's finish off with an exercise to target your core muscles. Coming onto your front and placing the wrists directly underneath the shoulders. And you can start off here on the knees. So from the knees, we want a straight line through the thigh bones, hips, rib cage, shoulders, and all the way out to the top of the crown. If you're finding that nice and easy, we can tuck the toes under and we can pull the thigh bones away from the floor and hold here in a nice high plank. So we wanna maintain the straight line. If you find your hips are dropping down or your bum sticking up, then we come down to the knees and maintain good technique. You might start by holding this for 20 seconds, progressing to 30, 40, and maybe even up to one minute. So thank you for joining me for week two of Step Into Spring. Hopefully you can see how strength training is gonna improve your fitness and improve your walking and help you to step into spring. If you'd like more support with this, join my Facebook group. It's Beth's Beauty and Body Care on Facebook. And you can catch up with two live workouts per week on there, Tuesday at 10 a.m. for a conditioning and toning workout and Thursday at 10 a.m. for a stretch and mobility workout. If you're not free at those times, you can actually catch up with those workouts at any time via the timeline on replay. So I hope you're going to check those out. I'll see you next week for week three of Step Into Spring. That's going to be our halfway point. And we're going to be talking about how cardiovascular training can help you progressing towards your Step Into Spring goal. Until then, have a fantastic week. I'll see you all then.